Is this thing on? Hello everybody and welcome along to a techno jock tutorial on the Blood Magic Blood Altar. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at two things. Firstly, the physical setup of the Blood Altar multi-block, as you can see here, from tier 1 through to tier 6. And then we're going to look at a method of automating the Blood Altar to make sure that you have a stock of all the slates that you're going to need right the way through your progression through Blood Magic. Now starting off with tier 1, all you're going to need to start off with is the Blood Altar itself. Then, when you move up to Tier 2, you're going to need 8 of these Blood Runes. You put them round the bottom of the Blood Altar like this. The centre block underneath the Blood Altar does not need to be a Blood Rune, and in fact it can even be an air block. It doesn't matter. So out one block, down one block, and then a ring of the Blood Runes. Moving on to Tier 3, you're going down one block but out two this time in this configuration and you're going to need to get yourself 20 blood runes. These ones are an, an upgraded version of the blood runes but in, for the time being you can imagine that these are just regular blood runes and obviously five on a side here totaling the 20 that you're going to require. You'll also see that there's pillars at the side here, and these pillars are three high, starting from the level of the actual blood rune there. So one, two, and three, and then it's capped off with a glowstone block. Um, and it does actually have to be a vanilla Minecraft glowstone block. It can't be colored glowstone. Uh, I think Extra Utilities does one of those. And it can't be a chiseled glowstone block or anything like that. It just does need to be the vanilla Minecraft block. These pillar blocks as well, these three beneath the glowstone, have to be a non-air block. So a solid block of some description. Uh, your mileage may vary with modded blocks or fence posts or something like that. If in doubt, what to do is get yourself a division sigil, whack the altar and uh, see that you've got a tier 3 altar. If you don't, replace these with, um, with a sensible block like cobblestone or something you know is going to work and then give it a whack again and see if that's gone back up to tier 3. If not, check your glowstone, make sure it's not uh, from a mod or something like that. That's the most common um, gotcha there. Moving on out to the tier 4, you're going to now need 28 more of these blood runes or their equivalent uh, if you're using upgraded ones, but you're going to need 28 runes all the way around here and you'll see um, again it is out 2 and then down another one. So same as the, the tier 3, out 2, down 1. And you'll see that you need these uh, seven blocks across here. So that on four sides obviously adds up to your 28. Now you'll see there's a slight gap here and then you've got your pillar of five tall this time starting again from the same level as your your blood runes. Five tall and then it is capped off with a large bloodstone brick which you will need to do some tier three stuff to before you can even get onto that. So that's part of the progression. Moving on now to tier 5, this one's slightly different in that you're now out 3 blocks from the uh, the previous tier's blood runes. So 1, 2 and 3 and then again down a layer, so down another step and this requires 52 runes in total um, around to cover all 4 sides, so 52 runes you're going to need in total. And then on each corner, rather than a pillar, you have a beacon. Now, this doesn't actually have to be an active beacon. You can just have the beacon block itself. Um, but I have got it activated in this case because it looks nice. And that's that. To go up to tier 6 altar, again, out 3 blocks and down 1. And then you're going to need 76 blood runes or um, runes of your choice. Um, to go around there so 76 runes and then out another two and then you've got a pillar of eight starting again from the same level as the blood runes themselves so one two three four five six seven and eight and then capped off with one of these crystal clusters which you're going to need to do some demon summoning and stuff to get hold of them 
So that covers all the bits to make up your tier 6 blood altar, which looks very cool indeed. Now I mentioned these upgraded runes. There's quite a few of them, I'm not going to go into it in too much detail, but there are... Oh, no, that runes, rune. So there's your standard blood rune, but then you've got augmented capacity, dislocation, rune of the orb, capacity, acceleration, all these ones here. So these are the ones that can, all these ones here, can substitute in for blood runes later on. Blood runes are your very basic one, but thing, one thing to note, when you're at tier 2, only these four on the cardinal compass points will count towards the bonus. They will count as a blood rune if you have them on the corners, but you won't confer any bonus that the actual upgraded rune will give you until you're at tier 3. Tier 3 and above, all eight of these count. Tier 2 and only the four on the cardinal points count. The corners don't. So that's just one thing to bear in mind. Now for the automation part of this. There are two bits that automate this. Firstly is the computer craft, which is most of the automation. And then we have a Steve's factory manager bit as well. Now, you could use a different mod than Steve's factory manager if you so wish. I'm using it because it provides me an easy way to get the stuff from this chest up into the altar and back again and it allows me to make the things invisible. Um, with another mod you would have visible pipes or something like that and I prefer not to have that. Um, but like I say, yeah, you could use conduits or something like that. Now this is the layout that we require and some of this is actually very important as to how it's laid out. In particular, you will see that the ender chest here is to the north of our wooden chest and other things like this connection here that is orange is connected to the south side of this redstone receiver whereas the white one is connected to the north side. The white connection here is connected to the left of the computer where the orange is connected to the back. That will come in important later on. This other red neck cable here again could be a redstone uh, conduit of some description it goes up to a switch and or a lever which can be used to disable the computer program so you can manually craft things so it's not constantly trying to take your things out and put its things in but that is an optional extra. So we'll take a quick look at the uh, program of Steve's factory manager. It's not an awful lot to it. Over here on the right we have got a section that handles making the the cables on top visible and invisible and if I connect that up so it clears them you can see that's just advanced cable clusters there with transforming cable camouflage inside them and then the one that is just beneath that one that we're looking at is just cable camouflage that is set to look like bricks so if we go back in here and we take the clear thing off there that's everything nice and invisible and hidden away. And we can even disconnect that trigger and forget about it from now on. The actual functional part of this is two triggers set up to the same redstone receiver. Same one there, there's the only the one that we've got, but they are looking at different sides. One's looking at the north side, one's looking at the south side. Now, remember, your one that's on the south side is this orange one which is connected to the back of the computer, the white one connected to the left hand side. So the one on the north side, the white one, is looking for a signal and when it gets to a high pulse it is going to take anything that is in that wooden chest and it is going to put it into the blood altar. Now if it gets a signal on the other side, on the south side, the one that's the um, the orange signal, it's going to take anything that's in the blood altar and then it's going to put it into the ender chest. So you've got to make sure that there's connections to all of those things there. So there's a connection to the ender chest, connection to that chest, and then obviously our invisible cables give us connection to the blood altar itself. And that is it.
for the Thieves Factory Manager side of things. On to the computer side of things, and this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, but I shall try and make it as painless as possible. Here we have a normal computer, and we can go paste bin get that code there, and then I'm going to call this alter. It's going to connect up to paste bin, and it's going to download that, and we can actually have a look at the program now. Taking a look at the program itself, we've got the header information, but just here at the bottom, you'll see, are you in expert mode? And you can set this to true or to false. Bear in mind that is case sensitive and it must all be in lower case. So you can see false there in lower case because we're not in expert mode. Set that to true if you are in expert mode, otherwise it won't work because expert mode requires the use of the Thomcraft arcane stone blocks rather than regular stone blocks to start making off your blank slates. Everything else should be the same though. Next up is the settings for the sides of computer for redstone control of Steve's factory manager. If you remember the uh, side the white cable was coming out the left and the orange cable was coming out the back of the computer to control the bits of Steve factory manager that were pushing the stuff from the altar into the ender chest and from that wooden chest into the altar itself. So change them if your layout is different from what you've seen here. Next up, direction of input chest relative to the ender chest. Remember I said that it was quite important. And the, uh, the input chest, the wooden chest in our case, is to the south of our ender chest. Again, put it either to the south or the north or um, up or down or whatever it is. Um, sides of the computer are left, right, back, front, top and bottom, um, but for the direction of the input chest relative to the ender chest it would be north, south, east, west, up and down. So just be aware that there's a slightly different nomenclature. Next up, side of computer for disable switch pressure pad and that was the one that's connected up to the pressure pad on the right side of our computer. This is now into the section which is largely preference or depends on your setup and this is how many of the slates of a particular type that you want to keep in stock at any one time. Now you can set these to whatever numbers that you wish. Just bear in mind obviously that the ethereal stock of a stack of those is going to take a very long time and an awful lot of LP to craft. Going along with that, these are the values of LP required to craft each slate from the tier below it. So the blank LP is 1000 because to go from stone or arcane stone up to a blank slate takes 1000. To go from a blank slate up to a reinforced slate takes 2000. And then from reinforced to imbued, 5000. Imbued to demonic takes 15000. And from demonic to ethereal takes 30. Thousand. Obviously, you need to add on the preceding layers or tiers of LP to get up. So 30,000 would be 45, 50,000, 52,000, 53,000 LP in total to get one ethereal plate or uh, slate, rather. So again, bear that in mind. However, I've left this in here in the so you can configure it yourself because if you've got a setup with a well of suffering that's making LP very quickly for you, then perhaps you don't actually need to wait until you've got 30,000 LP. Maybe when you're at 20,000 LP, by the time it, uh, it crafts it, you'll have generated the, the extra LP that you need. So if you've got a very fast system or a very efficient system even, with runes of efficiency, then perhaps you can lower these numbers a little bit to help you out. After this point, I suggest you don't edit it unless you know what you're doing or you're playing around trying to learn. I have laid it out as best as I can. You can see here, this is the bit for the expert mode here, where we're setting the base stone normally to Minecraft stone, but if it's an expert mode, then that base stone gets sent to the Thomcraft block cosmetic solid. Um, but like I say, it's fairly well labeled. It's reasonably well laid out. 
if you're learning computer craft, if you're interested in seeing how this works, or if you've got some sort of bug in the system and you're trying to figure it out, maybe you'll be able to find it yourself. I should be able to help you out. I'm contactable on the details above in the header on my Twitter, my Facebook. So please do do that. But feel free to take this apart and have a look at it and maybe make it work to your liking or learn something else from it. Um, to use elsewhere, but you should be able to go through this and uh, read it relatively easily if you so wish. Let's take a look at the altar in action now. The program's running down below and we have a pretty good amount of LP in here, certainly enough to create a couple blank slates and in fact some of the reinforced slates, but it's not doing anything. And why is that? Well, it's because we already have a stock of the slates that we'd specified in the program. So we can take out one of these blank slates and immediately you'll notice that it takes one of the stone that we had, puts it into the altar, and it is now transforming into one of the blank slates. And any moment now, there we go, it turns it into a blank slate, puts it back into our stock. That's great. Now, one of the things you'll notice is we don't have a stock of the reinforced slates that we wanted, but it's not doing anything. Now, it has plenty LP in here. Why is it not crafting it for us? Well, at the moment, it still thinks it's a tier one altar. It does detect the tier, but it does it by using the orbs. So by default, it will only think that it is a tier one altar. But if you put in a tier two blood orb, it will recognize it's tier two, tier three, uh, tier four, tier five, and tier six as you go up. So if we go and put in the apprentice blood orb immediately, you'll notice it took out one of our blank slates and put it in here. And shortly, there we go, it starts transforming and it's going to become one of these reinforced slates any moment now. And it'll pop back in here. Any minute. It does, take, it does take a moment. There we go. And immediately it popped back in here. And there it's taken another stone. And it's going to make another blank slate to replace the blank slate that it just used to make the reinforced slate. And there we go. It's quite happy. It's now got the stock that it wanted. Now, one thing to note is it actually remembers which tier it is. So if you put your orb in here and then take it back out again, it will remember that it's a tier whatever. So if you want, if you've got a transcendent blood orb, you don't have to have another one sitting in here. So you don't have to go through the expense of creating a second blood orb just to sit in here. You can just pop it in and it will recognize that it is a, a tier six altar or tier regard, you know, relating to which orb you've put in, and it will remember what one is being put in there. So that's a really handy uh, feature for that. And that about covers it. Um, now you are free to happily go into this ender pouch. You could have another ender chest sitting somewhere hooked up with a storage bust and AE system, and you should be quite happy with your stock of slates. I hope that has been clear and I hope it's been helpful. If you've got any comments or suggestions, um, then please do um, either comment here in the comments or contact me on Twitter, on Facebook. As I said, more than happy to help people out if they're having any issues with this. It's pretty robust, I've found not had any problems with it um, but if, if you've got any questions or queries give me a shout if you've enjoyed this tutorial please leave a like it then means other people are uh, more easily able to find it um, and if you haven't already please do subscribe for more of the same I welcome any suggestions for other tutorials I welcome any suggestions for making these ones better um, and I hope to see you around soon so for now Ta-ta and have a funs.